see the laser point. Oh, I don't see the laser point. So, sorry. So, I would like to thank uh, NIH for inviting me to give a talk uh, about uh, uh, the, the basic science uh, of the Stephen Jones syndrome and TN. Um, <laughs> Uh, at the beginning, I would like to outline my, my talk. Uh, they will include uh, drug antigen and, and environmental factor and the host factor uh, that include uh, genetic or non-genetic, actually retested or non-retested, and uh, also the immune mechanism involved in the pathogenesis of Stephen Jones syndrome, and also the, the downstream uh, cell death mechanism, and also the potential therapeutic target. So, um, uh, this is uh, in the in the latest uh, decade. Dec uh, the scientists uh, did make uh, significant progress uh, in this Stephen John syndrome research, such like uh, the, uh, the the hypothesis of uh, PI concept, the T cell clone identified from the drug hypersensitivity, and also the identify the the CD95 is a potential uh, target uh, that can in inhibit by the IVIG that applied to uh, clinical therapy, and also uh, the drug specific. Uh, uh, HRA associations such like kappa pin associated with B1502 and also the arapirinol Stephen Johnson associated with B5801 and uh, also the uh, cytotoxic protein granulizin that uh, find to, uh, to explain why the extensive epidermal necrosis involved in Stephen Johnson <laughs> syndrome. And also we have uh, done lots of functional genomic studies such like HRB1502. Uh, they have a functional low interact with the drug. Okay. So, um, consider the me mechanism. I would like to um, um, brief the concept uh, by this slide. Uh, the the pathogenesis could uh, involve many factor, many element, uh, uh, including our pharmacology element, chemistry, drug itself, the drug antigen also very important, and also some uh, uh, factor, especially the patient factor. That some patient have underlying disease or some genetic diversity, or could contribute to the pathogenesis. And also, the, the, in the end, the, the, the T cell will be activated by the drug, then help the, the uh, trigger the T cell uh, attack the skin and also body organ. So this is uh, the, the, the several elements involved in the pathogenesis, including genomic and the immunology, and also the cytotoxic T cell. Okay. So um, and, uh, the, the first element, first element, Factor is the drug antigen. Of course, is is very important because uh, not all the drug can trigger such a severe skin reaction like Stephen John syndrome. Only across the population, only a certain kind of drug, such like uh, aropinol, carbazepin, phenytoin, and the uh, sulfamethazole and uh, lamotrigine can have such kind. Uh, can is uh, potentially induce uh, this, this this kind of severe skin reaction. And also, this, this has been labeled uh, by FDA. So, uh, more, I, I think near 100 drugs could potentially uh, relate to Stephen Johnson. But uh, in, in clinical uh, and in academic therapies, only few of them, only certain of them, are, are notorious and, and potentially to cause such kind of uh, skin reaction. So, so taking an example uh, for the uh, anti convulsant drug, only um, is it in, in clinical, only um, uh, the the endocrine drug with uh, aromatic structure the common thing to relate to Stephen John syndrome, such like carbazepin, phenytoin, lamotrigine, and phenobarbital. But the the, the, the aromatic drug without the aromatic ruin, such like uh, topamine, valproate, and uh, the level drug set ten is a, is a ready to observe to relate to Stephen John syndrome. So meaning the drug antigen is very important to trigger the, the, the immune reaction to our host, to immune uh, to human Im Im immune system. So another factor is envir environmental factor. Uh, there have been no uh, some pathogens such like uh, mycoplasma, herpes virus can trigger the same reaction uh, that uh, induced by drug uh, of uh, of Stephen Young syndrome. And uh, and also uh, about ten to twenty percent is still unknown, so called idiopathic. But uh, uh, considering idiopathic, uh, sometimes is uh, we we don't know what's the factor. It's not necessary. It's uh, really it's unknown. So. Uh, for take example, we uh, recently identified uh, some virus in Taiwan, uh, enterovirus called like A6, uh, A6 virus. There's a new variant that the, the virus causes antigen uh, shift. Then we have observed many children develop very severe skin, generalized skin reaction where mimicking the Stephen John syndrome. So meaning there are some virus can have a similar antigen. They are able to trigger our immune system to, to, to like, 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 like Stephen John syndrome. So, 
And and another fact is horse fact. I, I think the in in the the uh, the the, the genetic, fact, genetic factor, of course, is very important, and especially in uh, the HRA RD have been found to strongly associate with many drugs, such like uh, carbamazepine, or alpilino, and abacavir, and also in, in in the in recent year the the Depson, the on, on kind of uh, antibiotics uh, can treat the the, the leprosy. I find to strongly associate with HRB three uh, three one o one. So there are several. Um, very good example of HRA, strong HRA association, specific earlier to specific drug. That, and in 2004, we first, firstly identified the strong association of uh, HRB1502 with uh, carbazepine induced steel and syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. And, uh, and the, the, these findings are further validated by many uh, other populations, uh, especially in, in South Asian country. But in um, non-South Asian country, uh, such like in Japan or Korea, this kind of association is not uh, is, is there no association was was observed. And and the, if we look at the, the early frequency of B1502, um, this kind of strong association only present in uh, in population or region with the high frequency of B1502. And also in, in European country or Western country, the, without the high frequency of B1502, this kind of, this kind of strong association was not pre observed. So we uh, have further follow up the, the, the more, with more sample size to look at the, uh, the, the phenotype uh, and the geno genotype correlation. We found HRB1502 is only strongly associated with the phenotype of uh, Stephen Johnson or TN, especially with, with the, the clinical presentation, more, more extensive also epidermal uh, detachment, more, more than 5%, 10%. They, they, this kind of genetic association will become ne nearly 100%. But with patients with limited skin involvement, such like less than 1%, or patients without this kind of blistering reaction, such like hypersensitive syndrome, this, this kind of a different phenotype, then the genetic association will disappear. We, we are not, not, cannot be observed this kind of strong, strong association. Okay, so what is the, the gene associated with uh, carbazepine induced uh, non steven Young syndrome uh, um, in terms of uh, hypersensitive syndrome or macular papillary rush? And we have found the HRA 3101 is a significant associated with this kind of non steven Young -Gen syndrome phenotype. And, and the, the, the HRA association is, is sometimes more complicated than we saw because in the study from Japan and the Europe, uh, the group, uh, they found that 3101 can be significantly associated with the, in, 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 in Jap uh, Japanese or, or European population, uh, uh, either the Stephen Jones syndrome or uh, uh, hypersensitive syndrome caused by uh, carbazepine. So our first study uh, by using the patient from the Euroscope uh, group, uh, we find uh, the, the HRA 3101 indeed shows strong association with uh, carbazepine induced hypersensitive syndrome or, or called the trace. But when I uh, first look, look at the, this earlier with the, the non Stephen Jones syndrome, uh, with the uh, carbazepine induced Stephen Jones syndrome in European patients, uh, then the, the, the association becomes weaker. So it means the, the, the one area of uh, HRA could be that is ethnicity specific and also the phenotype specific association. So it's very complicated than we saw. Okay. So this is uh, the Carbazepine translational lawmaking in Taiwan, uh, we first identified the strong uh, genetic association and then validated by many other South Asian, Asian country. And uh, then the idea was uh, labeled by US FDA and, and as well as other uh, in Taiwan and other country uh, health organization uh, to, to uh, and, and, and then uh, I think the in, in 2010, in Taiwan, our, our national health in, instruments uh, decided to cover the, the genetic test. So the, now in, in, in this kind of test is, is, is an obligation, not, not just a research in, in many countries. So in Taiwan, in our, we have an electronic uh, medical record system. So the computer will remind the doctor to perform this kind of test before the doctor prescribe the drug. So uh, in the recent two years, because the system, uh, the, the more and more doctors, they are, they are, now they are asked to have the genetic test. So in recent two years or recent three years, we really find one patient, uh, uh, although there are some still have some patients are induced by, have still induced by carbazepine, but uh, there are rare patients die from carbazepine. And in the 10 years ago, there are 
indeed, every year we have has so uh, many some patients die from stimulant syndrome, and uh, more than fifty patients. Uh, you you cannot imagine how how so many patients got stimulant induced by cause and pain. More than fifty cases, but now less than patient I can observe. But I already heard you can observe here the the the. The new user of cows and uh, also decreased in recent years. So meaning, the the awareness of doctor to prescribe our cows and pin and also the genetic test can both can prevent the, the disease happen. Okay, the the similar observation was was just published in, uh, by Hong Kong group. They they saw the before the policy of genetic test the 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 incidence is higher in in Asian country uh, about a point. Uh, to four percent, but now after the genetic tests are perform, have been performed in, in Hong Kong, there is uh, is rarely to find any case of uh, stimulant caused by cows and pin now. Okay, so this is a typical uh, 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 the tragedy uh, in in Taiwan that happened uh, every year uh, in the past ten years. There's a forty years female, uh, they just have the cows and pin. The doctor often will use the cows and pin to 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 relieve her her. And then, the, unfortunately, the, the lady have a, is, is a genetic susceptibility to cows and pain. So one week after taking the drug, he developed a, a generalized skin lesion. Uh, at the beginning, it's not just severe, but one, one or two days later, when I uh, visited the, the woman, uh, even the doctor has uh, begun to use corticosteroids. There's so many uh, breast region began to develop, and also on, on the face and trunk everywhere. And one week later, the lady had 100% skin uh, detachment and uh, died from multiple organ failure and sepsis. So meaning the, the, the skin is just is the beginning from skin, but uh, in the end, the, the immune system can attack all the organs, not just skin. Okay. And, and then the woman has positive for B-52, but it's too late. So now this becomes uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a large is a significant decrease. It never happened again. Another successful pharmacogenomic study uh, in, in, in Stephen John syndrome, I think not just, also the hypersensitive syndrome is uh, aropuinol. And we also find the B15A01 at least is strongly associated with aropuinol due to Stephen John syndrome and also the hypersensitive syndrome. And this kind of association is, is more universal, not like a and pin. Uh, can, uh, in different population, uh, also Japanese or European population, also show very strong association with uh, aropuinol. Uh, hypersensitivity or severe skin reactions. And when we uh, extend, our, extend our sample size, of course, nothing is 100%. So we extend our sample size, we found, um, although the, the, the sensitivity, uh, not 100% present in the RPM or hypersensitivity patient, but still a very high percentage, especially with patients with more severe skin reaction. Uh, such like Stephen Young syndrome or hypersensitive syndrome, more than 90% of patients carry B1501 a year. But for patients with mild skin reactions, such like a macular puppy rush, then this, the, the, association, the strength of the association decrease. Um, that, uh, only 65% uh, patients carry B1501. So meaning if you, if, if, even you, you perform the, the genetic test, B1501 is there no guarantee to 100% pre prevent patients from the hypersensitivity reaction. So what's the role of the HRA uh, in drug hypersensitivity? Uh, for, for the HRA retristic model, um, I think the, 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 such like B1502 or B1501 with carbazepine or arapino or a bucket of your entire with B1701, uh, this kind of HRA retristic model, uh, the, the HRA protein uh, have a different affinity to the drug peptide or drug or peptide complex. So it meaning the, 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 the drug peptide antigen have a direct interaction with the HRA molecule. And the different HRA molecules have different affinity to drug antigen. So uh, uh, taking example by carbamazepine, uh, the, the drug can directly bind into the, to the, the HRB fitting to or D and then can be recognized by the T cell receptor of the specific T cell. And then the T cell will activate, uh, release uh, some danger signal to, to attack the calcium side. So this is a working hypothesis that have been uh, realized in, in recent years. Uh, we transfect uh, the, 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 the study show uh, the transfection of the specific HRA idea, such like a B1502, 
and then the 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 the, the Satoshi TCO of Kawasaki and Steven Jones only can recognize and kill the the cell, the 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 transpective cell, uh, which express the the B fifteen oh two, but not other actual idea. So, uh, I mean, only actual B or B fifteen oh idea is a functional can uh, interact with the drug, then can present engine to the T cell. And also uh, other uh, actually BLD is similar with the structure similar to B1502, such like a B1508, B1511. They are zero, they, they, they belong to the same uh, zero type of actual B1575. So with the similar uh, actual structure also can, uh, when when the cell transfect with the similar actual BLD uh, can pre also have present the the the, the to the to the T cell. And, and the the, the teacher can recognize the, 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 this similar structure similar area, and this this uh, this seventy five uh, cell type uh, structurally similar area with the B fifteen oh two can also be uh, found in patient with the cows and pins Stephen Johnson syndrome in different population such as such like B fifteen eleven and the fifteen zero eight have been found in 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 other. Other population, uh, the patient of Kawasaki Stephen Johnson, you know, they are, they are not, not necess necessarily carry always carry B1502, but also B1511 or other actually can have the same reaction. Okay, so how actually and the T cell, uh, a TCR recognize the drug in in, in the in drug hypersensitivity? Uh, they, now there are three uh, three model uh, to explain the the, the complex. Complicates the, the, the mechanism. The one is the heptamine cancer. That is uh, uh, the, the drug. It was peptide. You will have a, a covalent binding, and and the example is the penicillin. Uh, the another another uh, com theory is the PI cancer. That is uh, the drug, uh, and the immune molecule. They don't have uh, the co covalent binding, and the 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 covalent can can fit this, this kind of. Uh, this this model, and the antigen don't do not have uh, they are not necessary for the antigen to have pro, have antigen processing by the the, the APC. The third theory is a uh, alter cell peptide uh, repertoire uh, the theory. Uh, the drug uh, such like abacavir they can uh, have a, is non covalent binding, but they can change the the peptide uh, binding to the the actual allele. Okay. So this is uh, the, the new uh, theory of the drug hypersensitivity. The drug, such like a uh, can uh, bind into the F packet of the B1701, and then the, at the specific positions, at the nine position of the F packet, the uh, the the amino acid, the binding peptide will be changed. About the twenty percent of the peptide will be changed. So this kind of theory, but this kind of theory cannot uh, explain can fit other drug induced. Stephen John syndrome, <laughs> such like Kapamazampin, uh, uh, we only observe uh, there are no change of the peptide binding if we with the present of drug or without the drug. Okay, so uh, we also find that the specific T cell uh, uh, can uh, recognize that, recognize the HIV fifteen or two in the drug complex. So I mean, it was, when compared to the T cell T cell clone, the T cell receptor compared to the health. Uh, B1502 tolerance control, then only the 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 Kawasaki Stephen Johnson syndrome show very unique uh, the the T cell receptor. So this kind of T cell receptor cannot be uh, uh, detected in in other drug induced Stephen Johnson syndrome such like fentanyl or alpinol. Meaning the the T cell receptor is another piece of uh, of uh, link uh, to the pathogenesis. It's actually important in the drug and also the T cell receptor. So and and many people are, are wondering whether the because the fin point has shown the the, the chem, similar chemical structure with the carbon pin. So many people think as uh, maybe the the fin point stimulant you know, also are significant associated with the 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 B fifteen two. Indeed, it, it shows significant, but uh, the strength is uh, it's, it's it's weaker, much weaker than the carbon pin because only one third of patient carry B fifteen two. So by uh, come down the general wide association, we found the uh, the significant association of is outside of actual area. It's actually is within the metabolizing enzyme. Is uh, in is the COP two C nine two T nineteen. So the 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 the, the, the gene linked to phenytoin Stephen Jones syndrome actually is uh, the the metabolizing enzyme for phenytoin itself. So the the two C nine three is a uh, 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 is enzyme is is a uh, is a uh, 
the different enzymes that can uh, affect the, the enzyme activity for the metab to, to metabolize the phenytoin. So when we look at the, the serine level of phenytoin, indeed we, we found that the, the patient with phenytoin induced demogenesis or trace, they have a higher uh, the, the drug concentration even before or even stop the phenytoin. Then the patient have a poor metabolizer the drug. So this kind of association you also find in not just in Chinese but also in Japanese also Malaysia. They also have show the the, the significant association with the phenytoin induced stimulant or hypersensitivity syndrome. Okay. So so it's in the the mechanism go back to the the old theory the met metabolism. It's the metabolism did. They also involved in the pathogenesis of drug hypersensitivity. Uh, for taking an example, we also find the, the, the in our pill, you know, the possibility is pretty low because even the patient with B1501 is not necessary to, to develop the, the severe skin reaction, even taking the our pill, you know. We find the patient with, if the patient with poor renal function, then the, 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 the metabolite or pill, you know, it will be delayed metabolism. Uh, even the patient uh, uh, the stop the taking the drug, and if the patient with poor renal function, with the the the, the, the CCR less than thirty, we found the, the mortality rate will largely increase. So meaning the 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 not just the B fifteen two, but also renal function. If we combine the two factor together, we found uh, with the poor renal function and the B fifteen two, the the risk of the the patient develop stim alopinol hypersensitivity will largely increase. So this is theory has been proved by the the, the the dose-dependent osteopenia specific T-cell response, uh, the, the study of uh, comfortable by Dr. Pichero. So meaning the, the not just the, the genetic, but also non-genetic factor can affect the, 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 the pathogenesis. So this is very complex. Uh, the, the drug antigen interacts with HRA, and also the, the, the drug concentration metabolism can play some role. And then the T-cell recognizes recognize the, 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 the drug and the HRA complex. So, meaning considering the eradication of the Jones syndrome, we, we so call this, this is a low hanging fruit to be achieved uh, in the future. We can prevent the, the, the disease, but uh, actually very complicated. We need to look at more factors, more genetic or non genetic factors combined together that can be successful to, to reach the goal. So, uh, the, the last piece of uh, the mechanism is uh, what is the downstream immune molecule part participate in the to, to, to the, the skin. The damage, uh, whether some specific signal or cytokine involved in the pathogenesis. So in the past, there are two uh, uh, mechanisms to explain the, the, the keratin side death. One is uh, the traditional perforating granzyme uh, B uh, in, interact with the, from the target cell to, uh, to attack the target cell. The another one is a fast ligand, and the interaction fast reset and fast ligand they can from the cytotoxic T cell can affect the, the, the cell death. And uh, uh, we, we found another, uh, an another important uh, protein that, co that it called granulocytin. We, we found that the, from the Bristol cell, the Stevens syndrome, Bristol cell of Stevens syndrome, they are highly expressed granulocytin in from the T cell. And then the, the granulocytin also presents very high concentration in the Bristol fluid. And, and if we use the recombinant granulocytin uh, into the minus skin, also show, uh, can induce the skin necrosis in the minus skin. So the granulation is placed by CD8 and CD56 uh, cytotoxic, uh, the, the cytotoxic T cell, NK T cell. So there are some research that shows the granulation uh, can, be, can be detected in the very early stage of Stephen Young syndrome, but not can be detected in, 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 in general skin uh, mild uh, drug reaction. So now they have been a, a repeated diagnosed kit. I can uh, rapidly diagnose the Stephen Young syndrome by, by using the, the, the kit. So the other scientific work we can do to help the stimulant syndrome is how can we uh, define the, the drug uh, uh, in addition to clinical uh, assessment. If, if there's some way in visual test that we can use a specific marker, we can do. And virtually uh, the traditional uh, in vitro test is uh, the sensitivity for stimulant syndrome is very low. Only um, uh, less, less than 20% of patients can, can detect by, by the in vitro test. But by using the, the, the appropriate, appropriate biomarker, such like the granulocin, now we found the granulocin is a very good biomarker for the in, in vitro assay. So if you look at the in, in, granulocin, 
Um, the aropinil is the most difficult drug to have the positive in vitro test, uh, even the, the, the ex vivo, the skin patch test. So we use the aropinil, the T cell, and the in incubate with the metabolite or spinil can successfully uh, get as a positive result. The sensitivity can as high as more than 80%. So meaning if we get the right biomarker, then we can improve the sensitivity and the diagnosis in the future. There are other cytokine kind or chemokines involved the steel junction, such as IL-2, IL-5, or 6. There are many cytokine kind or chemokines involved in the pathogenesis. So this is the, the, the complex the immune mechanism. The drug interacts with the, the cytotoxic T cells, and the T cells immigrate to the skin. Then the, the, there are several cytotoxic protein. Morning rising, gray enzyme, biproferin, fast ligand can be released by T cell, or the T cell can also release the fast ligand. And then thus, the, the, the gluconeosine itself is the aeromine, meaning it can stimulate the, the density cell or monocyte to spray more, uh, more, more chemokine to attract the leukocyte or inflammatory cell to the skin. So this is a, 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 a circle or immune system that specifically attacks the skin. So uh, also the cell death mechanism, there are recent, in this recent two years, there are many publications to explain, in addition to granulation, fast like and also anacin, anacin A1, and also uh, the, the micro RNA 18A5P also find, show to can participate some, play some role to, to attack this, to, to induce the skin death. So the, the, the final goal is to have, uh, we know the pathogens, and then we can, we, we should have the appropriate Therapeutic strategy to prevent steel junction. You know, we now we have several projects to ongoing to 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 uh, to to treatment the patient antagonizing or anti TN for alpha clinical trial. They have shown some efficacy, although this is not a grand randomized control study. Okay, I will thank many of my, my colleagues from Taiwan, uh, my hospital, Tanga Hospital, Academia Sinica, and also the National Army University and the, my international group, Regis Scar or this Scar or C Scar group. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Okay, we don't have a lot of time, but uh, maybe you have questions. I have one. Oh, yeah, Steve, sorry. When you, uh, when you inject the granulysin into animal skin, is it, uh, does it work with recombinant granulysin, yeah, yes, number one? And number two, does it induce a cellular infiltrate, or does the granulysin just bind and cause necrosis? Of the epidermal cells, I think the both the the granulin is have it still have a cytotoxic ability to induce the cell death. It 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 it, it don't need the receptor. The granulin can freely penetrate through the, the cell cell membrane and cause induce the apoptosis. And but also the granulin can attract many. Uh, it can can act like as an enomine, it can induce the monocyte or dendritic cell to release uh, chemokine. Then can to get more the blister formation. Do you yeah. need the cells, or can you just use granulysin? You, but to get the blister, do you do, do you need the cellular infiltrate, or can you just get it without the cellular infiltrate? Yes, just yeah. If you look at the pathology, the, there are only few uh, cellular infiltrate into the the blister. That, that's the then, then the, I, I think the 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 truth is, truth is uh, uh, the, in steel junction, we don't need so many uh, cells to, to, to consider and to, to, attack, to, to cause the skin damage. In, instead, they can express many uh, uh, the cytotoxic signals, fast like green rising, everything. Then, w w compared to the hypersensitive syndrome, although there are many cells infiltrated in the skin, but it did not cause the skin across it, did not cause the blister's reaction. So I think there are some specific signals, so-called danger signal can induce the blister and extend the skin necrosis. I think this, this is the unique part of steel junction syndrome comes in, in the immune reaction. Another question. Yeah, Manuel. In, the mic on. in autoimmunity, there are HLAs that are associated with autoimmunity, and then there are also protective HLAs. With your analysis, are you able to detect if there are any protective HLAs? What? What kind? So in autoimmunity, you have MHC molecules that predispose you to autoimmunity, and you have MHC molecules that protect you from auto autoimmunity. 
Um, in your analysis of MHCs that are associated with drug reactions, mm. um, are you are you able to also detect MHCs that are protective? I know that there's nothing that's been published, but I'm just wondering in terms of the type of analysis that you do, would there would the type of analysis be able to detect protective MHC molecules? So, again. Yes, we, we, we did find some HLB earlier. They have a um, uh, us ratio such as uh, 0.01. That, uh, that's, that's earlier is very popular in our population. So some HLB earlier, they, they, sh they, they, they are possible to have some protective effect in the immune system to against the, the, the drug. So you think you, you might have protective MHC then? Yes, yes. Because that, that, um, that would play into the role of the mechanism of, of how you think the disease is, is being caused because the protective MHC has to be doing something to protect the individual. Um, the protect, protective HLA earlier, um, I don't know it, it, it is so protective or not because, because the effect of some uh, HLA earlier, such as B1502, the, this earlier have a stronger affinity to the drug or the metabolite. But other HLA earlier, such as B5801, they are not so strong um, binding to, to the drug. So The protective allele doesn't have to bind to the drug. It can protect some other, uh, other mechanism. Yes, yes. Sing, sing, single data home answers the question for me. Uh, if you look at our, our, our uh, data in public nature, you can find the actual B4001. Uh, it, it is a protective, so called protective layer, meaning in, in tolerance patients, there are more, more pa tolerance patients carry B15 uh, 4001. But we don't know the, whether this kind of layer have functional low uh, compared to the B1502. But it's a good question to consider about that. Thank you. Can you disclose your name and affiliation, please? By the way, the last one was Dr. Mavarakis. Hi, I'm D David Margolis from the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you for the nice presentation. Early on in your talk, you showed a nice secular trend study looking at the rate of decline of carbamazin-induced Stevens-Johnson TN, and it was markedly decreased after you started your 1502 testing. But you had a decrease almost every year um, in what you showed even prior to the mandatory testing and, and prior to even when the testing became available. So are there other things that are going on in Taiwan in terms of public health to try to diminish um, the carbamazine-induced TEN, or have, have there just been changes over time in, in the population in terms of susceptibility? Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, yeah, in, 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 re in reality, we. Uh, I think the most of data they, they don't like to prescribe drugs. They they have ob obligations. They, they don't need, need to have to genetic test. So many data now they are they are more have more awareness about that, and they 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 will like to shift the the behavior. They prescribe other alternative anti combustion drug. So the the change over the incident of COVID nineteen now have they have, they have several issues. One is. Uh, the genetic test. Another one is uh, the doctor. They are decreased the prescription of this drug. I think the most of two are, 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 is uh, it can can explain why the 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 the, the incident of COVID nineteen now in, in Taiwan is is uh, look like uh, it's successful eradication, but uh, there are some factor, not just the genetic test. Okay. Thank you. We have one more minute, please, Doctor. Uh, to, just to follow on from that, you showed Patrick Kwan's paper from Hong Kong, but in fact what was happening was that uh, doctors were moving away from carbamazepin using other drugs, yeah, they used uh, which, which had a higher, higher in, which had as, as a higher incidence of SGSTN. So the overall burden of SGSTN, according to his paper, hasn't decreased, even though the carbamazepin-induced SGSTN has decreased. Mm. suggesting that uh, because it's a genetic test, they're not familiar with it, or it's a disruptive technology, they're just not using it. So I just want to know whether that's also going on in other parts of Southeast Asia, what the uptake is of 1502, and whether the overall prescribing of carbamazepine has gone down. 
I think the trend in Taiwan is similar to the paper probably in, in by by Hong Kong group. They we, the, the the trend is that the doctor now in Taiwan they prescribe more phenytoin than carbazepin than before. So so the, the overall the the incident of stimulant didn't change, but. Uh, so I think it's very important for the the, the health uh, administrators, they, they, the FDA or the, the government need to consider when they want to label one uh, the, the genetic marker to to the, the, to push the doctor to to do the genetic test. Then the doctor will move to another drug, and you 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 should you need to consider what kind of the drugs is still very dangerous in the marketing. So if uh, the, there are still many other alternative drugs, they are very dangerous. So we have we need to have more. Uh, Comprehensive uh, the policy, not just uh, the, the, the consider one drug. We need to to think. We, we, if we, the doctor changes to another drug, that could also induce the Then the overall, the incident will be change, could not could not be changed. So I think the policy, the the political policy, also very important for the clinical consider clinical implementation of of a pharmacogenetic study. In the, okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chang. So our next speaker is Elizabeth Phillips, um, which is a director of scientists and director of personalized immunology at Ward Oates Institute for Experimental Th uh, Therapeutics at Vanderbilt University. 20, 25 minutes, talk please, and some minutes for question and answers. Okay, thank you. 